Uh, my name is Khalida Pupal. I'm founder and director for Go Power, an uh, organization which is based in uh, Denmark and we have activities around Europe. And I myself is a refugee living in Denmark. That is my status. Um, and as a refugee woman, I, I use sport and and social activities, especially the um, life skill and leadership programs to empower women and girls, not for only from refugee backgrounds, but also the women who need support uh, and also need inclusion and integration in society. Um, I'm also former captain of Afghanistan Women's National Team and one of founding member of Afghanistan Women's National Team. Um, we used, for me, football has been always a tool to empower and include women and girls and to also own our voices as a woman of Afghanistan. Being like in, living in a country, a war zone or war turned country and going through a lot uh, where women are going and like even lacking the w very basic human right uh, being a challenge for women and girls. Even though we had the international forces and international allies in our country but we were still struggling but one of the the, the means for our activism and especially for me uh, to use for my right to stand for for my people and stand for for the women of my country I use football um, I use football to to raise my voice to encourage more women and girls to join the movement through through sports and in in this like past few years since the, the start of Afghanistan Women's National Team, the very first national team of Afghanistan in 2007, when the international allies were in Afghanistan, that was our, our tool to say, to stand against Taliban and say, for decades, for many years, you took, you took the right from women. And especially during the eight years of dark time where I was eight, nine years old, where the Taliban took the right of education, the right of active participation from me in society, from my mom, who was like an activist, also a teacher. They sh silent us. They removed, vanished women from the society and made it only a country for men and for extremists, uh, where people didn't have the voice. So, so when we can return back to, to, the, to the country where international allies were in our country, that's like how everybody in the country started to, to, to stand for their right, to do something, to be active part in the society, and especially women. Um, there were so many women who were lacking basic human rights in our country. Many women still were struggling and facing challenge in terms of uh, sexual abuse, discrimination, and lack of participation for women. Many women used education as a tool for activism in Afghanistan and many women used sports and, and raised their voices. So it became a kind of a, a way of activism for us. In, in, in like when I started, it was a group, small group of women and girls. When first time, I remember, like yesterday, when I first time I was told that I was attacked with, on a football pitch when I was playing football and it was a, a corner somewhere inside the school where a group of men jumped from the wall and took the ball that we were playing football with and we were playing with the women and girls and took that ball and and damaged that ball and said like women and girls cannot walk properly how they can play football and football women is are made to stay home clean the dishes and and be a servant for men and I had the choice to sit and cry and be afraid and not do anything. But then also I had the choice to say, to stand up and say, I will stand for my right and I will show all these men, also the women, to stand together with me and say no to all these discrimination, all these men who are taking the right from us uh, as a woman of Afghanistan. We are half of the population and we should have our voices. That's how our activism and my activism story in my country went to, to media, use my voice because I didn't have a gun and I don't, I never, I don't know how to like have a gun and work, how a gun works. And the only my power is my voice. That's how I used it. 
I used to empower women, I used to encourage women and girls to join me and I use sports. The beautiful thing about sport is the social side. The grassroots sport is the most beautiful thing because it has the flexibility, it has the power, it has the, pa the most passionate people that they come for the, the social side, for humanitarian, for friendship, for network. That's how we started together and recruited so many women and girls. And from, from only having few women and girls in our team, we ended up like till, till the fall of Kabul once again, we had thousands and thousands of women and girls in different levels uh, in society. They were participating there, registered with fo in football. That was our success. I myself and as, act as an activist, faced so many challenges and death threats, serious death threats. Many times I was attacked. There was a time that I could not survive. I could not like, I could not stay longer in my country. I had to leave, but I didn't give up. I remember the time when I was in a refugee center sitting and thinking, okay, is this it? All my fight for women's rights, for, for my country, for the bringing pride for my country, wearing the national team jersey, they took everything from me. Is it it? Like, I cannot do anything. I'm just sitting in a refugee center in Denmark and I don't have an identity. I don't know, but I don't have a network and I don't have friends, anybody. And I'm nobody. And I was suffering from depression. But once again, sport helped me to stand up when I when I saw so many women and girls suffering from depression and they are trying to, to finish their life. And I said, no, I still have the power. No matter, I still have the purpose. And my purpose and power is my voice to stand and unite women and girls and unite people, not only women and girls, but encourage more people to stand for each other. So that's how I started in the refugee centers when I was in living in different refugee centers, using sport as a tool to include, but also to create social uh, community and social, uh, social gathering amongst women. And that's how I started uh, like being more active. What is happening right now, situation in Afghanistan, and one, like people are, are actually watching the news and it's shocking. It's human, human humanitarian crisis right now in Afghanistan. We are talking about the generation, the young generation that have not experienced life under the regime of dark regime of Taliban. We are talking about women and girls that once again they are going to lose their voices. They are going to experience another dark time where their voices have been taken from them. They are abandoned at home. They are feeling abandoned by the world, by the, by the man of the country. And it's kind of like they are left alone with no, def there is no protection and they're trying to do everything possible to get support. I'm so lucky and I'm so proud that I could manage to get together once again with the help of the network of sports. That's how the power that has the sports to bring people together. I could manage to get the power, the connection together to support the women and girls of Afghanistan, the national team of Afghanistan to, to uh, evacuate them, to get them outside Afghanistan to safe place where they needed protection because we're talking about not national team players, we are talking about those players who, who use sport as a, as a vehicle to stand for their right. They are activists and their life was in danger. So that's why once again I use my voice, went to media and say like I need support for my goals, they are in great danger. And, and once again, the, the world of sports, from grassroots to elite level, they came together, they supported me, they, they, they checked on me, they contacted me how I'm doing, if I'm doing fine, and how they can help and support. We could manage to get a great group of uh, national team with their families outside Afghanistan, in Australia, with the support of Australian government, and so are many other amazing governments. There are still people in European uh, countries, amazing group of human beings around in Europe and also some Western countries, they are asking me, how can we be part of this? How can we support? We feel like helpless, we feel like useless, we cannot support, we cannot do anything. 
my message to every woman and girl listening to this is that you have still the power don't feel that you you're useless and you cannot do anything use your power use your platform stand for the right of people who need to support stand for the people who actually uh, lost their voices or their voices has been taken from them if it's in your country or if it's a woman who's suffering from from abuse from harassment or if it's just your sister or your neighbor stand use your voice get support from others unite people to stand for what is right and stand for the the right of people in your country in your neighborhood use your platform use your voice because that is very powerful